Yeah. Uh, before I introduce the judges uh, or the members of the tribunal, uh, I would like to say uh, why do we need a tribunal like this? Um, we need a tribunal like this because the production process of garments in the world has changed so much that no country has enough laws to control the situation of workers, uh, to, to look at the defense of workers' rights within the country. The laws within the country are not adequate to address these issues. And so there are actually no forums in the world that can hear what the workers are trying to say. And that is why we have put together this tribunal so that the workers in Cambodia will have an opportunity to speak about their lives and their conditions and, and they want to give this message to us, to the manufacturers, to the brands, to all those involved in the whole global production or the global supply chain. And that is why what we are doing here today is really very important. And a very important part of this are the people that we have in invited to hear what the workers and the experts have to say. And I'm going to introduce them in a minute, but I would like to invite them to take their places. Thank you. Uh, I would like to first introduce Dr. Gani Tognoni, who will serve as the chairperson of this panel. Uh, since 1979, Dr. Gyani has been Secretary General of the Permanent People's Tribunal. He is currently the head of the Laboratory of Clinical Pharmacology and coordinator of the Department of Cardiovascular Research for Instituto Mario Negri in Italy. Dr. Gianni is also the director for the Consortium Mario Negri Sud, an Italian non-profit organization for biomedical and pharmacological research. He holds a doctorate degree in philosophy and medicine. He has also acted as editor for several books and of more than 500 articles in major pharmacological and medical journals. Next, I would like to introduce Professor Gil Beringer. Professor Beringer is former Dean of Macquarie Law School, Macquarie University, Sydney, Australia, and former Director of the Centre for Critical and Historical Study of the Common Law. He is now Honorary Associate in Macquarie Law School. He is the co-editor of a monograph critic of law and the author of several chapters in books. Professor Beringer has published over 200 articles on a wide range of subjects including workers' health and safety, human rights, crime, policing and prisons, law, state and ideology, lawyers and the rule of law, men and mental health issues. He is presently a member of the editorial committee of, of the Alternative Law Journal in Australia and former member of the editorial boards of the Australian Journal of Law and Society and the Alternative Criminology Journal of Australia and an editorial consultant to the International Journal Contemporary Crisis. His present research interests include corporate fraud and the failure of state regulatory agencies in the contemporary Philippines, law as an instrument of soft power, imperialism and the Philippine-American war, terrorism and corporate violence, and contemporary capitalism 
the state and power of corporations. Next, I would like to introduce Mr. Nin So Manin. Mr. Manin is arbitrator on the Arbitration Council in Cambodia. He has been the national legal advisor and land law expert for the East-West Management Institute and legal consultant for land and law dissemination and legislative drafting projects of uh, organizations like UNICEF, GTZ, LMAP, DANIDA, ADB, and uh, other such organizations. Mr. Manin also has been the local consultant on good governance and projects of uh, GTZ, ARDP, and World Bank, and served as a legal trainer and interpreter for USF CLEC. Mr. Manin has worked in marketing and has been sales manager and supervisor for various private companies. He completed his Master of Arts in Governance and Development from the Institute of Development Studies, University of Sussex in the UK, and been visiting legal research scholar at the University of Michigan Law School in the USA. He completed his Bachelor of Law from the National Institute of Management in Phnom Penh and Bachelor of Arts in Geography from the Royal University of Phnom Penh. He's fluent in three languages, Khmer, English, and Thai. Next, I would like to introduce Ms. Prokvani. Ms. Prokvani is a freelance consultant on gender and social development issues. In this capacity, she has worked with the ILO on gender training and Danida defeat and New Zealand aid for CSPPM and NRMLP from January to March 2010. Previously, she had acted as Cambodia's national coordinator for UNIFEM CEDAW, Southeast Asian program for two, from 2006 to 2009, where she successfully helped with engaging the government into ratifying the optional protocol to CEDAW. She has also in the past held senior roles in gender and other esteemed organizations such as PSET, Oxfam, UNDP, CARERE, -E, and CAMERA. Her involvement with human rights began with the UNCTAC period when she became a senior human rights trainer. She has been an active participant in encouraging peace in the region and contributing to gender-related research. She holds a position on the board of directors for many national NGOs, including Star Kampuchea, CLEC, KWWA, NAPA, DKA, and uh, Nun and Law Women Association. She holds a master's degree in political science and international relations from the University of Phnom Penh. Finally, I would like to introduce Dr. Kek Pung, Dr. Kek Pung has worked as president of the Cambodian League for Promotion and Defense of Human Rights, LICADU. After founding it in 1992, seeing it grow into 12 officers and employing 125 staff in Cambodia. She gained notoriety during organizing the first meetings between Prince Sihanouk and at the time president of the opposition coalition, Hun Sen, during the latter 1980s. Since then, she has been recognized as a key figure on human rights related issues and chair of the Cambodian Working Group for the establishment of regional, uh, which is ASEAN, human rights mechanisms since 2000. She has an expressed concern in women's rights, founding and chairing the Cambodian Committee for Women in 2000, a local network of 32 NGOs engaged in advancing the women's causes. And she has worked as chair of the NGO CEDAW network of 72 organizations from September 2009. And is consultant for UNIFEM CEDAW, Southeast Asia program in 2005. 
She also holds a medical degree from France, which she obtained in 1968. So we have two doctors, some lawyers, and activists uh, in our panel today. And um, I, we, we have great confidence that they will give a fair hearing and that they will listen to what the workers and the trade unionists and the brands and the local stakeholders, the manufacturers have to say. And uh, so I invite Dr. Ghani to open uh, this session. Thank you. Uh, I think I can say on the behalf of my colleagues here how we honor her to be uh, judges as we have called today in this uh, People's Tribunal. Uh, it is clear that uh, in the People's Tribunal those who matter are the people, not the judges. We are here to represent, uh, in fact, uh, the point of view of the many peoples or population like yours uh, uh, who in the world, uh, and not only now, have been facing the same uh, problem that has been presented before, to have uh, a need, a need of answer which should correspond to the respect of uh, basic rights, but uh, who do not find an answer, an appropriate answer in uh, the international forum, despite the many declaration of interest. So the purpose of uh, a People's Tribunal is uh, a problem of uh, being capable of representing the point of view of those who are presenting their problem so that that could be uh, balanced against sometimes, uh, many times, uh, the failures of international and national law. We are specifically, obviously, interested in what matters from the point of view of international law, which represent the framework, or should represent the framework and the mandatory framework for national laws. We know that is not the case for many reasons and many times. And we shall do our best to show the relationship between what goes on in Cambodia and what should go on based on the uh, standards which, in principle, are established in international law and human rights. We know that the issues which are discussed and presented here are critical not only for Cambodia and for the workers in the garment industry, which are among those who are most uh, repressed from the point of view of their rights because of their position in the international market. But uh, the issues which are discussed here are specifically important because they are uh, really at the core of the significance itself of international law. Uh, international law, uh, human rights law, have been uh, established uh, having human beings uh, in the center of the attention. The tendency today and uh, the issues which are discussed here are representative of that is to consider human beings uh, as a minor variables with respect to the rights of goods. That's a general tendency, is a very critical issue which has to do with the sense itself of civilization because uh, it pretends uh, that uh, we go back uh, to the time where human beings could be considered instruments and not simply subjects of rights. Uh, the People's Tribunal uh, takes in this sense uh, as far as possible, seriously, the idea that we have uh, to give priority to the listening of peoples and to make uh, laws uh, 
compliant with the needs of people and not vice versa is a challenge but certainly we know that we are and I think we uh, do represent many groups uh, personally as uh, representatives of the People Tribunal in different uh, countries. We are representing many groups. We have had recently another tribunal in a different settings, for instance in Bangalore on the farmers' work and their right with respect to the pesticides uh, and the general strategy of multinational. Problems are different, but in fact are very similar to that which are discussed here. So we are trying to listen. We have, by definition, not a solution ready. We have not, and we are not, a solidarity body. You are those who are, in fact, fighting, lobbying, producing the, your rights. We are trying, based on a long experience, I remember the old campaign in the back in the 90s of the clean clothes campaign which are still present here. We are representing uh, a part of the work which is complementary to what you are doing. We are trying to give our point of view from the juridical law point of view which is not an abstract one. It's something which is based on your witnesses, uh, on existing laws, uh, but with a look forwards, we think that uh, the law could defend uh, the rights of people only if law is looking for the future, not simply is looking to defend uh, what is already existing, because uh, human rights are not a chapter which has been written once, uh, it must be written in the different situations which are produced uh, every time, in every country, in every area, in different ways. This part, as you know, the specific hearings is part of a long-term campaign, which uh, is summarized there, the Asia platform for uh, living wages and uh, decent working condition is a very important, innovative uh, initiative also because is that declares that borders cannot be used against people but must be used in a so-called global world to favor communication and rights, not to trap people in their own limitations. So that is one of the specific aims of this hearing and I declare the hearings open, we shall have obviously the opportunity of interact with questions and discussion during the debate. Thanks.